tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Adam Hunter, April Macy, Oni Perez, Jim David. This week's host, Paul Provenza. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Provenza! Thank you! Thank you! Welcome to Gotham Comedy Live! Yes, it is such a treat to be on this stage, one of the finest clubs in the greatest city in the world. I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, New York? You rock. We got a lot of New Yorkers in the room tonight. Yeah, I know we got some out of towners. Uh, you guys, you guys are from Sweden, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Have you been to the High Line yet? The High Line. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's a park raised up on a on a subway trestle from. A, it's unbelievable. It's beautiful. Check it out. You can hardly smell the urine from up there. <laughs> it's fantastic. City has just gotten so great. You know, everybody thought after 9-11, oh, New York will never be the same. Fuck that, it's New York. You kidding? It? Yeah, yeah, the next day, the Empire State Building was, hey, who's the fucking biggest building in town now, huh? <laughs> this city, man, nothing keeps it down. It's great. Two weeks after that, you could go into any titty bar in the city and hear, let's give it up for Brandy and her Twin Towers. <laughs> Brandy, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still here at the airport, please do not leave any Arabs unattended. <laughs> any unattended Arab Arabs will be confiscated and destroyed. <laughs> please do not leave. It's hard for me these days. Hard for me with all of this bullshit security stuff going around, man, because I, I do not deal well with authority. Whoa, it's really, they actually have signs up that say no joking, as if, you know, the terrorists are the ones fucking around at the airport, you know. <laughs> it's not my thing, dealing with authorities. But you can't do anything about it, right? I mean, you can't do anything about it if you ever want to go anywhere. So uh, I uh, have this wonderful little treat. You guys can find this online at Security Edition, with an E, securityedition.com. This is fantastic. You see, you see that? Yeah, see that? See that? It's a little metal card, and it has the Bill of Rights on it. <laughs> Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizure in red. You just put that in the old pocket, you go through that machine, all hilarity ensues. <laughs> oh, uh, these edges and these sharp points. The greatest thing, though. You actually get to hear them come right out and say, I'm sorry, I have to take away your Bill of Rights. <laughs> I really, I get into a fight everywhere. I just don't deal well with, uh, and seriously, I just, I get into, I got into a fight at the Museum of Tolerance. <laughs> sure. sure, I could not believe the, the prices in the gift shop. I tried to Jew him down. <laughs> it is, it's a thing, it's just, it's just, I can't help but piss people off. I don't mean to, sometimes I do, but generally I don't. I like to fuck with people who fuck with me. Like when Christians come up to me and they pull that shit, have you heard the word of Jesus? <laughs> you can use this one too, use this one too. I just go, you know, I'd love to chap. I gotta take my girlfriend for an abortion because we're pretty sure the baby's gonna be gay. <laughs> yeah, that thing feels gay to me. <laughs> I am so glad I don't have kids. I am so glad. What, how could you have kids? It, fuck, how could you parent kids in this world you, you just, you can't be a parent when the kids understand the world better than you do. 
I cannot believe the fucking internet and the media is just a blur and it's all just the bullshit and like world shattering stuff just all comes at the same pace and everything is fucking visual and fucking, it makes, it's just, I don't know what the hell is going on anymore. I don't know what's going, the horrible violence between the Palestinians and what is it, Orlando Bloom? I'm confused. <laughs> I don't, the, the, like the cast of Game of Thrones has Ebola or some shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I am so glad. I am so glad I didn't have the internet when I was a kid. So glad. If, if I had the internet when I was like 12 or 13, from that point until just about the time I come up on this stage here would just be one huge decades long arc of rope and cum. Just a span of decades of just a flying jizz buttress. Just porn, they, porn, they just give it away. It's right there, you can just have it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hold that better. Seriously, no, seriously, I don't know how any kid can, I don't know how any kid can accomplish anything. I swear to God, by the time I was 20, I would just have like a fucking war wound. It would just be like, just like a, a flapping around urethra and gristle, just fucking, just. I love that amateur porn though. I do love the amateur stuff. Oh, it's a great way to keep in touch with friends from high school. I found like 14 or 15 of them. Seriously, I just sit there just going, wow, she's let herself go. Why did she marry him? Oh. Uh, she's still playing the trombone. That's the thing about amateur porn, man. It's always, any of you guys, any of you, how old are you? You're about what? How old are you, about 11, 12? What are you? How old are you? 19. Did you ever walk in on your parents having sex? Did you ever join in? <laughs> Talk real slow. Cause yeah, see that's the thing, kids now they have to think they have to they have to live with the image that their parents fuck. We didn't have we didn't have pills for old guy hard ons when I was a kid. I didn't have to think about my parents fucking. Your parents fuck. Yeah, that's got to come up at really awkward moments. Those images just. Do you ever watch porn and just go, oh, that's the IKEA lamp my parents have. <laughs> I do think you can actually learn a lot about the world from porn, especially gay porn. You, you know, you should watch some gay porn. It's very educational. For instance, I had no idea, but apparently it's some sort of a rule or something, some law, I don't know, maybe a, a, a health and safety thing, I don't know, but apparently all delivery men douche before every shift. I did not know about that. <laughs> this country is so wacky. This country is so wacky. People get upset about words like crazy in this country. Nowhere else in the world do they get upset about language the way we do here. It's so stupid. I was in Ireland recently. And um, yeah, oh, you're from Ireland? Yeah. yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful. I was in a little Irish town outside of Galway and uh, it's just so, it's so different. And I was in this shop, and there was this little old woman, like a cliche, like right out of a James Joyce novel, just 
talking about like some cooking show she had seen with, uh, with the butcher there, and she's going, she wanted, I'd like a piece of lamb. And I'm not taking a piss, I'm not making fun of you, I just, I'm, I'm shit at accents. But she's going like, oh, did you see Delia last night? Oh, she was fantastic. Did you see what she did with the lamb? Oh, it was beautiful. I want to try that too. Oh, she's very good. Oh, yeah, she's fantastic. I love how she does it. Oh, she's a cunt for the butter, though. <laughs> I never heard the word cunt so cute in my life. <laughs> you guys have been fantastic, and you got a hell of a show. Hell of a show coming up here at Gotham Live. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Adam Hunter is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Yes, welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. Yeah, oh, you are in for a treat. Our first performer this evening, ladies and gentlemen, this guy, you may have seen him on The Tonight Show. He has the dubious distinction. I think it's a great credit. He was the last proper stand-up set ever performed on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome Mr. Adam Hunter. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Did you ever think a girl's really hot on Instagram and then realize it's Throwback Thursday? <laughs> There's some beautiful women here tonight. I love Asian women, I do. That's why I hang out at traffic school. <laughs> there are some hot girls here. My ex-girlfriend was gaining a lot of weight, you know, but you can't tell your girl she's gaining weight, you know? But she's like, do you think I'm getting fat? I was like, trust your gut. But she used to love giving head, you know? Some girls don't like giving head. I call those girls single. <laughs> you ever go down on a girl and you think you're making her really wet, but it turns out you have a right nose? <laughs> I went down on this one girl that had a yeast infection, and uh, yeah, I was so pissed because I was trying to cut carbs. Thank you, this half of the room. Okay, that's good. There's a, a new sex tape out between Jake from State Farm and Flo from Progressive. And the lizard filmed it. Orlando Bloom uh, threw a punch at Justin Bieber the other day, and I'm torn on this, because a part of me, you know, thinks he deserves it. On the other hand, you shouldn't hit women. Before that, he spit on someone, which is weird because he seemed like the kind of guy that would swallow. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. I do love sports. I love sports. Uh, is, uh, I did a show one time. There was this huge guy. He was a football player for the Bills. I don't know. He was the quarterback. I'm like, sir, what do you do? He's like, I play football for the Bills. I'm like, what position? He goes, I'm six foot six and I'm white. What do you think? I'm like, bench. <laughs> I got this new NFL PlayStation game. It is so realistic. You press a button and Aaron Hernandez kills somebody. <laughs> I love the UFC. My favorite fighter is a guy named Diego Sanchez because you hit this guy and he just keeps going forward. Like his last fight, his eye was so black and swollen that Kim Kardashian tried to sit on it. My family's really fucked up, people. Uh, today I found out my stepmom is not my real stepmom. <laughs> She's my stepdad. And, uh, <laughs> my parents never explain anything. I'm like, Mom, where do babies come from? She's like, babies come out when two people are in love. I'm like, great, I'm adopted. 
my dad told me when you meet a girl, look at the mother, because that's eventually she's gonna look like. I say you look at the grandmother, right? If she's a gilf, you know? <laughs> gilf, grandmother I'd like to fuck. There you go. The hottest gilfs are Mexican though, because you're 26. I was in Mexico, I love Mexico. It is just like California, except way less Mexicans. <laughs> I love New York. Last time I was here, it was the Gay Pride Parade and the Puerto Rican Day Parade in the exact same day. Ricky Martin walked 127 miles. <laughs> I, I do like to watch porn. My ex used to get mad at me for watching porn. She's like, what does she have that I don't have? A, a mute button? I bought a bootleg porn of the Bahamas. That was a mistake. It was a video of the guy who sold me the porn jerking off to a porn. <laughs> I apologize. I do masturbate a lot. I went to a sperm bank and sold my blanket. <laughs> you ever masturbate and the load goes over your shoulder and then hits the guy behind you at the movies? You get kicked out of Frozen. <laughs> the guy behind you thinks it's 3D. <laughs> I to call this girl recently. She's like, do you have a condom? I'm like, no, I have a bank statement. That'll stop you from getting pregnant. <laughs> because I'm broke. Look, fuckers, I can't explain all of them, right? The worst is when condoms break. It's like the best feeling fall by the worst. At first you're like, wow, this is the best condom ever. Then you look down, your penis is wearing a headband. <laughs> like, who are you, LeBron James? <laughs> they say the average guy burns 400 calories an hour during sex, which means during sex, I burn seven calories. <laughs> I was trying to pick up this one girl, so I promised her multiple orgasms. I just left out the fact that I'd be having them. <laughs> Let's talk politics, shall we? John McCain announced today that he's still relevant. He announced it on MySpace. Here's the deal, people. I am all for affirmative action, but I think it should be fair. Like, if a basketball game ends at a tie, team most white players should win. <laughs> I got into a car accident last week. It totally fucked up my phone call. <laughs> I hate auto text on my phone. There's only auto text. I try to text my friend, how are you? It came out, sent me a dick pic. <laughs> It's never a good sign when you send a girl a dick pic and she writes back, LOL. <laughs> I do smoke weed. When I lived in New York, I was a pothead, but in California, I'm a, a patient. <laughs> I love it when hot girls are stoned, just not in Iran. Everything's always the guy's fault, though. You watch commercials, extends, and it'll extend your penis. Some guys do have small penises, right? But what if it's the girl? How come there's no compacts? You know, or, <laughs> or smushes, or vagismal, or twat, not a lot, or clam closers, <laughs> zip the lips, shrink the pink, I'll keep going. Bestow the camel toe. My girlfriend told me to set my goals higher, so I dumped her. <laughs> my girl and I used to fight over bullshit. We were in bed together, she was telling me a story, I was playing their nipple, and she was like, will you pay attention? I don't go like this, but you're telling stories. I'm like, that would be fucking awesome. I would talk all day. My stories would be as pointless as yours. You know? My friend's like, dude, when you have a girlfriend, you have sex all the time. Yeah, but it's by the same girl. It's like having an iPod with one song. <laughs> How many girls here wax or shave their vaginas? Raise your hand. Nobody, it's fucking Afro night here at Gotham. 
It's 70s throwback night. You all have bushes and picks. That's why you're not laughing, you're itchy, okay? <laughs> I like when girls have landing strips or triangles, or if you're Mexican, you have a fence, you know? If you're, <laughs> if you're Asian, you have a math problem, you know? <laughs> you ever call your ex on their birthday just to ruin it? <laughs> you're like, happy birthday, bitch. Uh -huh. You ever start laughing during sex because you can't believe how low your standards have gotten? I live in LA, a lot of models in LA, and they're obnoxious. I went to one girl, I'm like, you're really pretty. She goes, tell me something I haven't heard. I'm like, you're really smart. <laughs> you guys have been great, thank you so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, April Macy is taking the stage when we return. Yes, welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. Uh, this next performer, I first heard her on the Howard Stern Show. She killed me. You may have heard her there too. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome April Macy. <laughs> portion of the show and yeah and I wish I wish I had a dick too. <laughs> I do. They're really neat. Do you like your penis, sir? You do? Yeah, you do, you dirty fucking pervert. Yeah, you do. These dicks are awesome. They are. Having a vagina is horrible. <laughs> Having a vagina is like always living in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> Everybody's always trying to break in and vandalize. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Gotta keep a sign posted to keep off your lawn. It's very upsetting. It's very upsetting. No, dicks are cool. They make more money. Like, what do women make? Well, we make like 75 cents on the dollar. You guys are just scooping in extra quarters with your dicks, right? Just, just buying snack wraps and jet skis and shit we can't afford. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do you guys know that penis is owned 98% of the land in the entire world is owned by a dick? Women own less than 2% of the land because we buy dumb shit like spray tans and eyelash extensions, right? <laughs> All my cash is tied up in bronzer currently. <laughs> they do, American women spend more on the diet and cosmetics industry than we do on our entire education system. Did you guys know that? Yeah, we do that for dudes, by the way. We buy new tits and our kids can't read. That's for you, sir. That's for you. It's for you and you and you. Thank you. You're welcome. No, dicks are cool. They can do fun tricks, right? Do you do dicks? Is this your sweet gal right there? Yeah? Do you ever chase around the house and just flap your dick at her, right? Like, look at it. Look at it, 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 look at it. <laughs> Our men, all, they're always presenting their dicks. Like, you see, you see, you want it, you want it, look at it. You're like, all right, I fucking see it. <laughs> what kind of dick flapper are you, sir? Are you, <laughs> are you an up and down? Are you side to side? Or can you get some, holy shit, holy shit, you have a giant dick. Oh my God. He can heli, if you can helicopter fellas, holy shit. Cause it, you're giant. You got a giant moon to wiener. Cause you got to get momentum swinging, right? You gotta, <laughs> you gotta swing that. You, have you ever seen a dude with a little wiener schnitzel try? He tries to get it rocking. He's like, all right. <laughs> and then he realizes he's like, oh shit, that's an Apache that's never getting off the ground, right? <laughs> Dudes, you guys care so much about your wieners, and I want I want to let you off the hook for the rest of your lives. Like women don't give a shit. I'm happy you have a giant dick. I'm real happy for you, 
but that's a lot of penis. I don't need that much penis because I don't like cranberry juice that much. That's a lot of dick. It's <laughs> a lot of dick. Some women got that, and then the other dudes are like, what the fuck's she talking about? <laughs> I don't really understand that cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> no, my ex had a button penis, and I didn't give a shit. That's my wino. Uh, my, my wino. My window. I like small to medium. That's kind of my dick size that I'm comfortable with. And my, <laughs> my ex, he had a button penis, and I didn't give a shit, right? I didn't care. I'd fuck with him, because I'm an asshole, right? I'm a real piece of shit. So <laughs> I'd be like, ah. It's like a button. I just want to push it and hope a gumball pops out of your ass. <laughs> no. no, your your dicks are cool, but your nutsacks, what a mangled mess of meat that shit is. <laughs> Not black eyes, your balls are cute as shit, sir. They are adorable. Uh, they are like two tiny little Cadbury cream eggs, so thank you. No, white dudes, did you powder your nuts before you left the house? No, I guarantee you watch him. Watch him when he walks out. He puts his hand in his pocket and he just shakes that shit, right? Just <laughs> jostles it. Does, I know men want you to do stuff with them. Does any woman know what to do with balls? Just raise your hands, ladies. Just raise your hands if you know how to work a bag. <laughs> oh, yay, a couple of whores know what to do with them. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? I like to pretend they're little tiny Jehovah's Witnesses and I just ignore them and hope they go away. Or like, oh shit. <laughs> Fuck, they're still there. <laughs> and they smell like cabbage. <laughs> All right, this next joke before I get out of here. This next one, it's not even about you fellas. It's about other dudes outside this room. That's what we're gonna talk about, so don't get sensitive. <laughs> Other guys, when they're going down on a lady, don't they think they're doing big things down there? <laughs> Not you guys, you guys are right on target. Other dudes <laughs> in the tri-state area. Other guys are always off their mark, aren't they? They're like an inch too high or two inches too low. And I get it, it's a very small mark. <laughs> so guys just try to cover a lot of ground to get to it. I just just down there, real enthusiastic, like. <laughs> shocker, 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 shocker. <laughs> shocker, you look young and confused. That's two in the pink and one the stink right there. That's the shocker. It's a shocker. When you've been married 25 years, you can move up to the Spocker. That's your silver wedding anniversary. <laughs> Do not try this right away or she will punch you in your face. Yeah, yeah. The shocker, that's what they call it. I didn't make that shit up. The shocker, you know what be a shocker is if you knew where the fuck your clit was. That'd be a shocker, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd be shocked as shit if I no longer had to mark it off with a Sharpie just to show them where it was. Like, shiny. And you guys like to watch, right? You like to watch when your lady's going down on you, doing her lady business? You like to watch, sir? Yeah, yeah, you do, okay. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, guys like to watch because women love their men. They love you guys. They want to please you. They want you to think they're sexy. And that's why when we're going down on you and we feel your eyeballs just burning, right? Just, <laughs> just burn in the top of our skull. <laughs> All women do the same thing. He's looking down like, oh shit. He's looking down, so what do women do? We look up. <laughs> we make eye contact. And then we give you that sexy, sexy look, like we're in the middle of a Mexican soap opera. <laughs> Chimichanga. 
yeah, show you who's boss and we go back to business. But when a guy's down there, I don't know what you ladies do, but this is what I do. And I'm pretty sure it's what we all do. <laughs> He's down there. I like to stay very still. <laughs> kind of like a chalk outline or a scarecrow. Either one, take your pick. I stay very still and I keep my eyes closed. Because you guys look creepy as shit. <laughs> yeah. It's true, because when a guy's going down on you, all you ever see is just two eyeballs just staring at you. <laughs> Just two eyeballs. You guys look like an alligator coming out of the water. Just, I'm an alligator. <laughs> All right, I'm April Macy. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Oni Perez is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Yeah, welcome back, folks. Show some love to this next performer. He is making his television debut, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Oni Perez. Yeah. Just want to run my fingers through his ponytail. Just grab it. It's like a loofah. Uh, Hi, everyone. Uh, I am a Latino. Thank you for not clapping. But I actually like the word Hispanic more. I like to be called that, because that sounds dangerous. Right? You can tell the difference. Latino is what you write on your college application. Hispanic is how you describe a suspect. So... You'll notice that on the news, they use it like that. Anytime they want to make us look good, they call us Latinos like when they need us to vote or something like that. <laughs> Latinos are coming out in record numbers to vote. Latinos are the fastest rising minority at first. Uh, we're gonna turn to this story. Uh, two Hispanic males shot themselves in the Bronx. <laughs> fighting over a pit bull they both claim to own. <laughs> the pit bull was taken away to a shelter hopefully to be adopted by a nice Latino family <laughs> in the future. In the future. Uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. I am a dad, even though I have the body of a mom, but <laughs> I'll accept that. Thank you. It's true, guys. But like, you know, like a healthy mom in a good long-term lesbian relationship and <laughs> I play catcher. Thank you. Doing good. <laughs> a role model. Um, but like, uh, I, I did. Uh, I started having kids at a very young age. I was 18 years old, right out of high school, when I had my first kid. And I mean, like, just graduated, but like public school, so I can like barely read good. So. <laughs> Tough, all right? 250 kids in my graduating class, and I was uh, not on that list. I graduated in summer school. You ever have to do that? You get no, like, there's no ceremony. You just go pick up your diploma at the office. And, like, some, some teacher's aide just gives you 18 years worth of your life. You're like, oh, that's great. Uh, bye. I don't know. I have no future now. Thank you. But I had him young. It's very young, uh, 18, you're not ready to handle any of the responsibilities, not like I am now, but still, then more so. <laughs> it was tough. Like, when I first found out I was having kids, I didn't have like that man reaction, like, I gotta take care of my family now. 
I didn't have that reaction. I was like, holy shit, how are my parents gonna take care of all of us now? <laughs> you got work to do. And she's pregnant again, so we're all working. Uh, it's too young, man. They tried to help me. My uh, ex-wife, uh, now, uh, then we were married, but uh, she gave me that book, What to Expect When You're Expecting. She handed that book to an 18-year-old. I was like, look, you can expect me to never read this shit. I'm never. <laughs> no one's naked. They're using grown-up words like vagina. What is that? <laughs> I've never seen a vagina. That's what grown-up women have. <laughs> but we're doing good. My, uh, it's been a few years. Everyone's divorced now. <laughs> My kids, uh, my oldest daughter is gonna turn 18 years old this year, guys. 18, yeah! And she can read good, real good. My youngest daughter is now 16, so there it is, absorb it. I am taking care of two teenage girls, which is really difficult to do because I look like I shouldn't be around teenage girls. Um, yeah. Even their high school knows that. Uh, they stop me at the door every time. <laughs> Can we help you? And I'm like, drowned like I'm stoned or something. I'm like, yeah, I'm just here to get some kids. Uh, <laughs> so there's two teenage girls that I'm gonna take with me. <laughs> they're like, yeah, no, we can't let you do that. I'm like, they're my kids. And like, yeah, we're still not comfortable with you <laughs> taking these kids. <laughs> but they're smart. They are too smart. Way too smart. It's true, man. My youngest daughter is in pre-calculus. My oldest daughter is in calculus. Yeah, I failed pre-algebra, so here we go. <laughs> I can't help with homework, and they know it too. They try to sit me down, like, Dad, I really need help, can you help me? Yeah, shoot, what do you got? <laughs> Number six, if two geometrical shapes coincide, well, again, let me stop you right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> and uh, I feel you're being condescending right now. So I'm going to go get food at Taco Bell, and <laughs> you guys can just graduate and take care of me. <laughs> That's what I hope. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, all, it's all fun, man. My youngest daughter now is 16. Her boyfriend is 19, which is great because I can legally fight this dude. <laughs> it's awesome, I've never been able to do that. Yes, I will fight him. Uh, I hope I win though, because <laughs> that's gonna be pretty embarrassing to just be on World Star, <laughs> getting knocked out by a 19 year old who like posts YouTube videos playing the guitar. And I know that because I comment on his videos. Anonymously, I just random shit like, you have a small penis. <laughs> he doesn't know who it is. <laughs> She's a good kid and I trust her. She wanted to go to Canada for the summer to uh, visit him and uh, I was excited. I was like, yeah, you can go. But initially when she told me that, I had like that Taken moment, you know? <laughs> like the movie Taken where that whole thing. But like in the scenario, I'm still me. I'm not Liam Neeson, so. <laughs> I can't help, I can't help you. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I dread that moment. <laughs> She's gonna call me, Dad, I'm being taken. What do I do? Uh, I, I, I don't know, say goodbye. I guess we can. <laughs> Seems like a good time. I just say bye. Do I leave my phone on so you can find it? No, turn it off, you're in Canada. That is expensive. <laughs> I can't afford that. I can't afford it. <laughs> My youngest daughter has a tattoo, guys. What? I know. Not on her lower back, so don't worry. I don't mind. <laughs> right? That was my biggest fear, that it was on her lower back, because I love strip clubs, and I, I love those. <laughs> I love the lower back tattoo. Don't get it. She didn't. Thank God. She just got a tattoo on her wrist that says courage because she's been through so much, you guys. <laughs> what? 
What a courageous kid. Every day I'm amazed at how much courage it takes to do nothing all day. We should smoke weed sometime. <laughs> Guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I'm on the prize. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Jim David is taking the stage when we return. to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back. Folks, you may have seen our next performer on Comedy Central Presents, and he's been on a lot of other shows you absolutely haven't seen. Will you welcome Jim David? <laughs> It's so nice to be here. I have a great career. I just performed at the Akron, Ohio Home Depot Caulking Conference. <laughs> yes. I have a children's book. It's not selling. It's called Mommy Drinks Because You're Bad. <laughs> I don't have any children. I just don't have patience for them. Even when I was in kindergarten, I was going, who are these children? <laughs> God, I need a cocktail. Kids make too much noise. I saw this little five-year-old holding on to his dad, and he was going, Daddy, I just want to say... And I just wanted to say, what the hell do you have to complain about? Wait till you have your first colonoscopy. <laughs> Wait till your wife leaves you for another woman. <laughs> Wait till you bet $10,000 on the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Wait till your hard drive crashes and you lose all your porn. Wait till the day you have to look at porn wearing your reading glasses. That's a sad day. Oh, yeah. Wait till you're in the middle of masturbating and you lose interest. Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're like, you're like, ha, ha, I can't, it's hot, I can't. It's too much trouble. I'm so happy I didn't have to get on an airplane to come here. Uh, I just took the subway. You know, they have all these signs in the subway that say, if you see something, say something. I saw this one man and I said, God, you're ugly. <laughs> I can't stand making a plane reservation anymore, you know? Hi, I'd like some information before we begin. What is your final destination? New York. I think you said Phoenix. <laughs> Is that right? No! I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. What is your final destination? New York. Checking flights for Seoul, South Korea. No! What is, no! Did you, no! We seem to be having, agent, agent, agent! Checking flights for agent, North Dakota. Shut up! I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna rub your face in a gravel driveway. Just get me an agent! Ah! I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. What is your final destination? Your face! Because when I find it, I'm gonna bash it in! I think you said New York. Yeah, I live, uh, I live here in New York. I'm originally from North Carolina. I have a lot of white trash relatives who I love dearly. I prefer to call them trash de blanc. <laughs> I have this aunt, one time she said to me, Jim, last year your uncle and I went on a trip around the world. This year we're gonna go somewhere else. I have another relative, she's like a closet racist and she won't admit it. And what she'll say is she'll say, now I'm not prejudiced. And then you just wait. <laughs> you know, for whatever boner is gonna come out of her mouth. I mean, years ago I took her to a concert and she said, I'm not prejudiced, but you didn't tell me there were gonna be this many black people. 
and it was an earth, wind, and fire concert. <laughs> and, and she was really nervous about Obama getting elected, and she said, I don't like it when the blacks are in charge. <laughs> oh, really? When was that? <laughs> what, did you work at Motown? And I found out that another distant relative of mine was in the Klan, more for the social networking. <laughs> and I was talking to a black friend of mine and I said, you won't believe this, I found out a relative of mine was in the Klan. And he said, oh my God, a relative of mine was lynched by the Klan. And all I could say was, small world. <laughs> We really do live in two different countries, don't we? We live in America, and we live in America. <laughs> in America, we welcome your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. In America, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> in America, we have a thing called a Second Amendment, which means you can own a firearm, but you don't have to have an Uzi and an AK-47 and an AR-15 and a bazooka. In America, yes you do. <laughs> In America, we have a thing called climate change, which is causing crazy tornadoes that destroy entire cities like Joplin, Missouri. In America, tornadoes is caused by the government. And in America, gay people can get married in 19 states and the District of Columbia. In America, don't ram it down my throat. <laughs> it's always a bad choice of words. <laughs> I actually got married two years ago because they legalized it in this state. Yes. <laughs> and, but, don't applaud, it's just a marriage. We've been, mar we've been together 26 years. That's 38,000 in straight years, by the way. And I called my dad and I said, Dad, we're getting married and you have to come. And my dad said, okay, but does this mean I'm gonna have to give you away? <laughs> Who's the bride? Who pays for this? <laughs> and then my mother said, don't even think of asking to wear my dress. <laughs> but my parents sang at our wedding. How cool is that? Yeah. They sang at our wedding, yes. They sang, they sang a beautiful song called, Where Did We Go Wrong? <laughs> and then they cried. I don't, know, I don't know why people are so scared of the marriage issue. I mean, we have the most boring life, you know? We get up in the morning, we have cocktails. <laughs> and, and then we do brunch. And then we go to schools and recruit. And then we get high and go dancing. And when the crystal meth wears off, we call it an early night. <laughs> Folks, keep laughter in your life. Life is too short. If you are depressed, get out of the house and go find somebody to laugh at. <laughs> they are out there waiting for you. <laughs> you ever sat next to somebody on an airplane you think is gonna drive you crazy? I was flying back from Europe and this guy sat down next to me and it became very clear that he had some sort of condition because the second he sat next to me, he was going, hang, 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 hang. And I thought, oh no. What am I gonna do? Hang, 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 hang. I put my iPod on as loud as it would go. Tell me something good. Hang, 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 hang. Tell me that you like it. Hang, hang, hang. I thought there is no way I'm gonna make it across the Atlantic unless I knock myself out. I took three Xanax and half an Ambien and I knocked myself out and I woke up about four and a half hours later and the guy was asleep, praise Jesus. But then, when, no shut up, when he woke up, he started up like an engine starting up and he was going hang, 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 hang. Hang, 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 hang. hang. Hang, 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 hang. 
And I thought, you know what? Probably nobody ever talks to this guy ever, right? So I looked at him and I went, hang. Hang, 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 hang. And then he looked at me and he went, hang, hang, hang. And now we've been together for 26 years. Thank you, everybody, that's it. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Yeah! Welcome back. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. I just, you guys have been unbelievable. This has been such a great night, so much fun for me. I just gotta, I wanna share a story with you. And I don't think this is name dropping, but fuck you. I, this is a name <laughs> any comic would wanna drop. I'm gonna tell you a story about when George Carlin called me and told me a joke. And fuck you, I'm dropping that name. Hell yeah. Yeah. So uh, I love this. He calls me up and he, the phone rings and he doesn't say anything. He just goes, and I pick it up. I go, hello. And I just hear George Carlin's voice on the other end going, why don't men like to sleep with their women in the mornings? I said, I don't know, George. He goes, did you ever try and open a grilled cheese sandwich? Click. <laughs> Long may he wave. Folks, let's bring up all the comedians you've seen tonight. Adam Hunter, April Mason. You guys have been unbelievable. I think we owe them some applause, don't you? Adam Hunter, April Macy, Tony Perez, Jim Davis. Come on back to Gotham Comedy Live. Thank you. <laughs> 